2017 year in review and questions and answers on this episode of Six Five Guys. This episode of Six Five Guys is brought to you by Defiance Machine, defying tradition with innovation. Our Bros Rifles, precision on another level. JC Steel Targets, the industry leader in quality AR-500 steel targets. Hi, and welcome to 6-5 Guys. I'm Ed Mobley. And I'm Steve Lawrence. Guys, we're at the end of the year, and like in a lot of programs you see, we're going to go ahead and reflect about what this year has been for us and some of the highlights, and we're basically going to interview each other with questions. One of the questions we often get at the range and even through email is, this year we shot 308 Winchester. Why is that, Ed? Why? Well, you know, it, it, it's interesting. I mean, initially it was to... I guess fulfill our role as pundits of, of the industry, as, mm -hmm. as reporters of, of the sport. And so you, you had a lot of interest in, in tactical division and that was uh, set up so that folks who would normally shoot a 308 either because they're new shooters or that's their service rifle, they would have a, a platform uh, within which they, they, they would be competitive, mm -hmm. okay? And, and, and so that was our, our driver uh, in shooting uh, 308. But in, in doing so, there were some, there were some interesting learnings, uh, frustrations. I mean, I can, I can tell you that uh, it didn't take me long to realize why historically uh, folks in, in, in this game move away <laughs> from 308 at, 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 at the first opportunity but then it, it also uh, caused me to, to reevaluate the, the benefits of, of having a, a 308 as a, as a practice mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. rifle. I, I never thought that the 308 uh, would, would really make a good practice rifle. Or if you didn't yeah. have a 308, let's say you're shooting 6.5 or 6 mm -hmm. mil, should you, should you build a 308 or should you build a 223 trainer? And after my experience with the 308 and, and some of the opportunities for improvement that it highlighted in my personal shooting form, namely mm -hmm. recoil management, it, it, it kind of changed my mind. And, and I think there are a lot of merits that even if you may not want to compete with a 308 or, or compete in, in tactical division, there are a lot of merits to using a, a 308 as a, as a trainer rifle. Yep. So, um, that's, I think, sort of the, the, the Cliff Notes version of, of uh, you know, why we did it and, and, and sort mm -hmm. of, you know, my, my experience. I mean, what did, what did you think about the 308? Well, I know when we talked about what we we're going to compete in in 2017, um, at the time, there were a lot of new bullets that came out that we had not tested that, you know, received a lot of attention and some fanfare. Uh, the Nauser RDFs were fairly new. Uh, for 308, we, we had those. We got some test bullets from, from other folks. You had the classic Lapua 155 Cnars. Uh, we, we got bar, barn burners from uh, Mid-South Shooter Supply. Right. And then you had uh, Hornady with their ELD, uh, another really good bullet in 308. So all of those kind of came onto the scene roughly within the time, same time frame. And there was a lot of interest in our part to go test that. And hey, why don't, why don't we go ahead and just shoot 308 and we'll try those bullets out. Well, well you're right, and I, and I think that that really uh, you know dovetails with the fact that uh, again, being journalist of, mm -hmm. of the sport, right? Yeah. You know, you've got these new bullets on the scene, and uh, I guess in a sense, you know, we're we're testing them out and showing them, show you know, sharing the results yeah. so that uh, well, you know, you don't necessarily have to, or <laughs> depending on our results, uh, you know, maybe yeah. you'll you'll go ahead and, and do the same thing. And one, one other thought in terms of 308 was, you know, we run into a lot of new shooters or folks that are interested in getting into the sport of, of long range precision and, and PRS type shooting. And they're not sure what rifle to, to start with as far as a caliber selection. Mm -hmm. And we always tell folks that are new to the sport, it doesn't matter, bring what you have. And in fact, a lot of guys have the classic 308. 
Now, yeah, it's not ballistically um, competitive to your sixes and six fives, but you know, why spend a ton of money into something? Just come out, bring the rough you've got and run it. So to me, that was one other reason to run 308 because you can still come out, have a lot of fun, hanging out with the guys, you're gonna learn a lot. And as you mentioned on the training aspect, yeah, when you come back to a, a more light recoiling cartridge, there are some benefits of having that training and getting back to the fundamentals of, of uh, not losing your sight picture, recoil management, and things like that. Yeah, I mean, you're right. And, and also, I, I have to admit, there were some real frustrating aspects of shooting a 308 because on a, <laughs> on a really windy day, yeah you can feel like you're wondering, is your rifle broken? Do I not know how to shoot anymore? Now, because there's a tactical class, uh, when the results are in, you know, you find out, okay, well, okay, I did pretty well, you know, relative uh, to, to the other tactical shooters, but then maybe not well enough. I mean, just, you know, competing in a class, I mean, some, some people may, may really like that. And again, for somebody that, the 308 is is really uh, the current viable option for them. Mm -hmm. That that's fine. Um, I, I think after shooting 308, I, I wouldn't build a 308 uh, if I'm shooting something else just so I could compete in the tactical yeah. division. Yeah. But you know, as I said earlier, I I will definitely keep a you know always maintain a a 308 competition type rifle. Just from the from the training aspect, because Absolutely. I've, I've realized that that yeah. recoil management is is a, a big part of this game and, and a big part of, of being able to to shoot well. I couldn't agree with you more. So let's move on to another question: gear. We've taken a lot of look at different gear. We see gear at matches, new things that people are using, and and, and stuff that perhaps has been around for a year or two, but has really been adopted by the top competitors. What are your observations there in terms of kind of what's been some of the prevalent new or newer gear in 2017 that you've seen? Well, we've seen, I mean, this isn't necessarily new for 2017. You've, you've seen the, the, the proliferation of the, of the Reezer uh, game changer bag. Absolutely. And then some of the, the imitations of that bag mm -hmm. because it's, it's, it's a really useful, it's a, it's a very fungible uh, piece of equipment. I mean, you have a lot of folks that in a one bag match uh, would would go with that, you know, hands down since mm -hmm. you can use it, you know, in the front of the rifle uh, and the, the back of the rifle. But also uh, from a, a gear standpoint, you know, people have been shooting six mil for a long time, but it's really interesting to see how the, the six dasher where you heard some whisperings about it in 2015 and i remember in you know the early part of 2016 you know people would be joking about those dasher guys but you you look at some of the success that people have had with that cartridge yeah i, I think it's very notable <clears throat> but then you know a lot of people initially criticized the dasher because they're like oh you can't push that six mil bullet at like you know, a, a scorching velocity, th right. 3150. But a lot of folks have, have started to recognize that it is better to find a load that is more consistent and predictable and reliable. And than chasing that extra 100 FPS. Right, because yeah. as, as we've seen, you know, in some of our load development and in discussions with, with other uh, folks that are really in the know, you tend to have an accuracy mm -hmm. node near max peak pressure, and then there tends to be one uh, right below that. And with usually with that consistency you're talking about. Right. Yeah. So, so I think traditionally, you know, before, you know, 2017, mm -hmm. a lot of the conversation was around, you know, I can't get to, you know, 3150 without flattening primers, you know, and, and yeah. people felt really you know, that they were missing out because they couldn't get to 3150. Now the conversation's more around, hey, that, that, that next lower accuracy node of, you know, 2950-ish mm -hmm. in a 26 inch barrel, that's what, what most folks are, are, are talking yeah. about now. Yeah, in fact, I, I would agree with you. It's been quite the trend. When you look at what the top finishers, I think the top 10 in the PRS finale, all of them were shooting a six millimeter cartridge, whether it's you know the, the BRX 
for the six dashers, so, uh, or even the, the six Creedmoor. So, pretty amazing. Well, and, and also the, 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 you know, some of the reservations people may have of, of shooting six uh, millimeters is barrel life mm -hmm. and, and perhaps, you know, dropping down to that lower accuracy note may give you some additional barrel life. Yeah. I don't know if it would necessarily be, uh, you know, a great leap forward in barrel mm -hmm. life, but it, it certainly doesn't hurt. Yeah. One other trend that I've noticed, though, is also the, the prevalence of people adopting chassis. Stocks are still very popular, but I'm starting to see a shift in terms of the top competitors using a lot more chassis. Um, you know, I'm not sure what to make of that. I, I still like stocks. I like chassis, but uh, well, these are chassis. I mean, uh, on, you yeah, know, you got the rail, you got the MPA rail embedded within the stock. That's and true. and again, you know, these actions are not bedded. I mean, it's a it's a it's a chassis from mm -hmm. Manners. Um, so. Uh, I think you know there's just the flexibility if you want mm -hmm. to you can you can move from you can have different chassis i mean i think both of us we already have a, quite a collection of, of different chassis yeah and and it's nice to just you know quickly move from from one to another of course mm -hmm. if you you know bed an action in a stock that limits your ability of, of what you could do with that stock if you mm -hmm. wanted to use it with a different action you'd, you'd have to rebed it so right so i think people are realizing that uh, chassis are certainly you're not losing out from an accuracy standpoint mm -hmm. and there's there's a flexibility and and i think just ease with which uh, you can just try out different things or if if you have you know, different actions, say you've got a 308 and then maybe you've got a, a six mil, you know, competition action, you would just need to invest in one chassis and, and just move uh, those actions in between chassis. I right. Mean, that, that's certainly another right. consideration. Absolutely. Okay, Steve, so I've, I've got another question uh, for you. So, uh, you know, why, why fewer videos? I mean, have we have we lost interest? Are we having issues? I mean, what, <laughs> what, 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 what's going on? Well, I mean, you know, we always have the constant pressure. If we want to put fresh new content, we realize there, there's a, folks that are following what we do and interested in some of the information we're putting out there now. Real life actually gets in the way of, of this pursuit. And in fact, um, we haven't even participated in as many competitions this past year as we would have liked. Um, and I would kind of put it in two different things within that personal time category. One is work, because right. um, you, you and I both have um, employers that keep us very busy. We travel quite a lot for a living, and um, we both have kind of a new set of uh, responsibilities that we're managing, and so that just takes time out of kind of what we, we have left to do on the personal side. And then me personally, I've had health issues. Um, you know, I'm <laughs> I'm in my mid fifties, and um, you I've been. Great. You look great, by the way. <laughs> Thanks. I'm suff I actually have a gout, which is a form of arthritis. Um, it's um, driven by a couple of things, um, primarily heredity, because my dad had it, and then also um, you can control it through both medicine and what you eat. So, um, and it got to a point. I, I've been suffering from this chronic condition for the last few years, but have managed it. And this year, it, it got so bad that I was almost off my feet for two months. Yeah, there were a number of matches that I, I remember that yeah. uh, we both signed up for and you are owed and, 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 and I shot. I mean, and, and I've, I've gotten gout now and then, and here we sound like two old codgers talking about <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, illnesses associated with age. And I think people are getting ready to, to tune out. But all I can tell you is that um, Gout is the, the if if you were to, to hit your toe with a ball peen hammer, I, I think that is the level of pain mm -hmm. associated with gout. Yeah, and yeah. it can you know your feet are the most prevalent place where you feel at your toes, um, but I've had it in my knees, and my ankle. Um, you know, it's usually your your extremities where you get it, even in my fingers when it was really bad. Um, luckily, it's under control. Um, I've been on uh, meds, but again, a function of the medication I've been on. I actually ended up putting on about 20 pounds of weight this year. So as we go into 2018, one of my goals is to get back into fighting condition and, and try and get to, to, to lose that amount of weight. And uh, it'll be, I'll be in a much better position to compete and, and have fun doing this. Yeah, and, and I've, I've been successful in, in losing a bit of weight, but I still need to lose a, 
a lot more. And so just as you're going to have a, a renewed focus on, on your health, I'm, I'm going to be doing the, uh, the same thing. And what's encouraging is uh, my wife uh, wants to do uh, the, the same thing. So mm-hmm. uh, the uh, and I'm, I'm just going to put this out here to, to hold myself <laughs> accountable is I've, I've realized I'm lactose intolerant. OK. OK. So I'm going to be drinking my coffee black. Oh, okay. You know, and, and, <laughs> That's and if, a change. Yeah, and if anybody knows me, okay, I mean, you love you, that heavy cream. <laughs> oh man, let me tell you. But I, I, I realize, you know, without. Yeah. I mean, just look up lactose intolerant. You'll, you'll know what it, what it does. Mm-hmm. But I, I, I just notice I can literally, you know, not, you know, drink coffee black. I don't, you know, have those uh, issues that you know can stink up mm-hmm. a room if you know what I mean. Uh, you know, versus you know when I do use it. So. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to start drinking the, the, the coffee black because, you know, there's, there's still a lot of calories there. And then, uh, you know, as far as the alcohol consumption is uh, particularly being in, in a consulting role, you know, you're going out to dinner uh, each night. Mm-hmm. And if I look at where the calories really come from, it's, it's, it's the drinking. And, yeah. and a lot of times there's, there's like social pressure because, you, you know, you don't want to be you know, like that guy, you know, like, oh, you know, he's, he's, he's not drinking, but you know what? I'm just, I'm just going to be doing my club. So with my lemon lime and, you know, people can think it's uh, it's a big gin and tonic. Okay. But mm-hmm. that I'm putting that out there. I'm, 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 I'm you know, except for very special occasions, mm-hmm. uh, I'm, I'm just gonna, you know, just, I'm, so I'm, if I'm, when I'm at matches or getting together with folks and everything, just, just don't look at me strange when I'm not drinking. So I'm just putting that out there so to, to be accountable. Yeah. And, I, and I think doing that will just, you know, not, you know, that's probably, another, yeah. you know, a good thousand, yeah. 1500 calories a day between that and, and getting rid of dairy. So. One other thing about 2017 and that's com- quite a segue. <laughs> <laughs> from, from shooting, uh, no, no, you're you're not you're not tuned into the um, AARP uh, <laughs> channel. So, but uh, one of, one of the things that we did was um, for I think it'd been gosh a couple of years since we both have ROed a match, and so you know I'm happy to say that we actually ROed I believe three matches. Yeah, actually, uh, you know what, and and that's uh, and and that's important to mention, mm-hmm. right? Because. I mean the benefits of ROing. I mean, yeah. I mean, talk about that. Yeah, right? it's it's not like it's a consolation. I mean, mm-hmm. I mean, talk about well, the it's benefits. Part, yeah, it's part get. of the give back. You know, it, part of it is meeting the shooters, and um, you know, we want to to volunteer and, and help these matches be successful. Um, you know, part of it is is providing that time as a volunteer. You want good spotters that are experienced behind the spotting scope and scoring. Um, so I find that fun, and, and actually, as you had mentioned, you know, when you're behind that spotting scope, you can actually learn quite a bit. Absolutely. Just watching, um, you know, finding out what what that shooter held as far as wind, their wind hold, and actually seeing where that bullet uh, trace, you know, how far it off or it was an impact. Um, you can actually learn a lot sitting behind a spotting scope. Oh, and the, and and not only that, but if if you're on a stage and 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 we had the good fortune of of, of being on some particularly uh, challenging stages and mm-hmm. just seeing sometimes a hundred shooters come through there mm-hmm. and and address a particular stage is is very 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 interesting. Yeah. And I mean not only from seeing the the professional shooters but when there's clearly a, a first time shooter and and folks are, you know, relaxed about doing a, a, a bit of coaching. Mm-hmm. Sometimes what I find out is I try to see how good my wind calls are that I give to that newer shooter <laughs> because that that's also another. Yeah. That that that's also. You can a, see how far you were off. Well, yeah. It, it, yeah. It, exactly, yeah. and 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 using uh, you know their their ammunition mm-hmm. uh, to do that. So so that's also another. Uh, a benefit of ROing, and then even if you're not ROing, I think sometimes just showing up to a match, okay? Because sometimes there are these squads of like really, really good shooters, and there's nothing to stop you just from shadowing a particular squad mm-hmm. and and just going through all the stages, and and that's something I I really don't think I've done that, and and that I I think would be something very very beneficial is is you know, find a squad of, of really good shooters mm-hmm. and then just see as they, they go through all the different stages. So even if you you don't compete, well, I mean, we've, we've 
you know, had some some learnings that yeah. you know we've been able to to share from our audience. So yeah, let's do another question. Um, we get a lot of viewer email and viewer comments on our Facebook page as well as YouTube. Thank you for that. Please continue to do that. Now, as far as the questions that we get, how would you classify kind of common questions, typical questions that we get a lot of? Low development. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that, I mean that. I mean, it's it's really interesting. It, it's uh, you know we we've tried to cover a lot of different areas, but mm -hmm. I, I find by far 75, 80 percent of the questions are. You know, here are my targets, here are my velocities, you know, help me interpret it. Yeah, or, look at my shot groups. Or yeah. a, a, a close second is, here is how I do my reloading. And and they'll just, you know, just lay what, it out. What in, tips do you have for me? <laughs> yeah, they'll lay it out in excruciating detail and they'll say, you know, please critique this. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, and so sometimes, you know, we're, we're not able to, to get back to folks as, as quickly as, as we would like because we want to give a thoughtful response. Yeah. So, I mean, we, we do try to get back to everybody sometimes, you know, it, it, it might not be. It might be a it, few weeks, maybe it, a month. It, so. it, it might be a few weeks. And, and, and sometimes, yeah. you know, folks just, you know, show you a target, you know, without any background information, any background information or data and say, well, you know, what's what's my best load? I mean that that that's very hard to, to respond to, and you know we, we get some of those as, as well. Yeah. Um, so so, yeah, I, so I if you do ask a question, it. yeah, it yeah. is is helpful to provide as much information as possible. Um, it'll give it'll help us to give you a more well thought out answer. Um, things we can't help you with though is like I've seen a number of these questions. Like I bought this brand new rifle, what would be the best load for it? Oh yeah. Um, yeah. You know, well, yeah. what are you shooting at? What bullet do you want to use? What kind of powder do you have available? There are just so many questions. Um, and 6.5 Creedmoor, as far as the 6 fives are concerned, are probably the most popular out there. That's like the new 308. Yeah. And um, although we have shot 6.5 Creedmoor, we don't actually own rifles chambered in 6.5 Creedmoor. We don't load for it. So, you know, again, our, our answer there is consult a loading manual. Um, that would be the best place to start, so. Absolutely, absolutely, so yeah. Okay, so here's, an, here's another question that the, the audience is probably eager to hear. I mean, they ask about why are we shooting 308? Mm -hmm. And so they're probably wondering, all right, are you gonna stick with 308 or are you gonna go to another cartridge? So Steve, what, what, what are we gonna well, do? Well, I think we, I let the cat out of the bag. I, if for, you guys that follow us on Instagram and Facebook actually got you know a, a big load of goodies from Graphs, and uh, had kind of laid it out. And, and so we will be shooting as part of the six millimeter club, uh, specifically six by forty seven, um, also referred to by some of the folks that we know as six WTF. And uh, <clears throat> so we'll actually be using uh, the one ten Sierras as far as the bolts concerned. And then we're gonna start off shooting with Varget as the powder. But uh, basically gonna take some of our existing rifle components, chassis, enter stock, um, take off a barrel, put a brand new barrel on those, and that'll be the rifle. But Steve, why aren't we shooting six dasher like everybody's shooting? <laughs> well, that's why, a really why, good why, question. Why, yeah, I mean, that's what everybody's well, shooting. You know, it's why, funny, because yeah. we actually go to, uh, Something that we consult with ourselves as sort of uh, um, our expert that that we lean on quite heavily as we talk to some of the pros that we know, um, and in particular our gunsmith Travis Riddell, who we trust intimately in, in these types of decisions. And uh, you know, our initial inclination when it was just you and I talking about it was, why don't we run the six dasher, right? Um, well, there's far forming involved with it. Right. Um, you have to get the parent cartridge if you can find it. Yes. Um, the 6.5x47, by 47, uh, when I talk with Travis, uh, now he's been shooting the, the 6 5, or the 647 or the 6WTF with his brother Jesse, gosh, for you know, years, 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 seven, yeah. eight years. Yeah. And so he's very familiar with it. They go back and forth between 6.5 and 6 all the time, in fact, using the same cases. Well, exactly, exactly. And they'll, they'll go to a match with, with non-fire form brass. He said it's that accurate. So uh, we completely trust him in, that, in his judgment there. Uh, plus that case, as you know, is just so stout and tough. Yeah, it's, it's stout and you know, we, we anneal, so I, mm -hmm. I feel you know, completely uh, confident and you know, even if 
we did go back and forth, which we wouldn't. We'd, we'd size it down and, yeah. and, and stay there. But, you know, you mentioned the Stout uh, case. Um, even though you could run a 110 Sierra uh, much, much faster than, say, 2950 mm -hmm. uh, with the 6x47, we're, we're going to find that that accuracy node right in the, the, the 2950 range that, that shoots bug holes. And I mm -hmm. think with the... Uh, that that stout Lapua brass, uh, you know that, you know we'll probably get twenty odd uh, reloadings. Yeah. Out of uh, yeah. out of our, our cases. And so. I suspect, you know, also as we mentioned, coming from three hundred eight going to six, um, for for us that'll be a game changer because it, it, yeah. the recoil management um, skills that we've practiced quite a bit this last year were really, you know, pay off for us. At least that's that's my hope. Yeah, and, and we mentioned this earlier, but uh, I had the, the good uh, fortune of uh, spending some time with Jake uh, Vibbert uh, earlier this week, and he used an, an interesting uh, metaphor in, or analogy, I guess. It's like um, if you're, let's say, an athlete, you run marathons. Do you practice just by walking? And then at the marathon, you, you actually run. Again, you know, his comparison being, you know, you train with a two two three, but then during the matches, you, you know, you go to your six or, or six five, which which recoils more. Or as an athlete, would you train just as hard or even harder than you would, uh, you know, during a, an actual event? And I, mm -hmm. I think clearly, I mean, when you look at good athletes, I mean, they they train just as hard, if not not harder, in, in practice. And so that really got me thinking. Yeah, with a three oh eight, it's like if if you learn to to manage that recoil and and are on your game with a 308. Mm -hmm. If you go down to a 65 or a 6, I mean it's it's going to be kind of how anybody would feel just shooting mm -hmm. a 22. It's yeah. it's it's all it's all kind of kind of relative. Good. Well, let's uh, do one more question and we'll wrap this up. So as we look out for 2018 and some of the stuff we have planned, what do you expect us to produce as far as content, things that you'd like to focus on? Well, fortunately, we've we've got a, a, a pretty rich library already. Mm -hmm. But what I see people asking us to do is, you know, take, for example, reloading. You could search around in our videos and kind of piece them together and figure out everything that, that we're doing around reloading. And it's like, hey, can you just put together a video that just kind of summarizes your, your learnings overall and your approaches. Mm -hmm. So I, I think videos that explore certain topics that, that maybe we've dealt with just in, 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 in passing. Little, yeah, just in passing or snippets mm -hmm. and, and just summarizing that, we, we, we sense that the, the audience uh, would would enjoy that. Yeah, would, would I, find I think that, so. Would find that useful. I mean, what what, what do you think? Well, about? you know, along those topics, uh, we get one of the most common requests we get is um, this is before we actually posted it was the Microsoft Excel spreadsheet that we had used. Oh yeah, we get a lot the, of questions for the analysis yeah. around that. Yeah. Can I get that file? Well, sure, you can have that file. And then the follow up question once they get it how is how do you use it? How do I use it? Or how do I tailor it? Well, as we'd mentioned in a previous question, we are very busy. We don't have the time um, as much as we'd like to to provide detailed support around that. So it's pretty much you can have it, but you're pretty much on your own. So one of the questions or requests was, well, can we produce a video to actually provide a tutorial as to how to use that or how to tailor that Excel model to your specific needs? So I've been thinking about that. We'll, we'll put that on the list to cover for 2018. I think that's, that would be a good topic. Definitely. And you know, I have, I have another question. And um, this, this just came to, to mind because I was kind of glancing backward there at my Glock 34. A few years, you know, we were seeing some pistol sprinkled into the, to the rifle matches. And I don't know my senses this year. I, I didn't see much of it. They, and I'm just wondering, is, is, is that a trend of people wanted to be just kind of more long range rifle purists? Or mm -hmm. is that just maybe our own isolated uh, observation kind of up mm -hmm. here in the Pacific Northwest? I mean, what, what do you think? I'd be interested in hearing people's comments on that. Yeah, at least in the Northwest, I have not seen a lot of pistol this year uh, integrated into the rifle matches. Yeah, um, I mean, for me, I mean, I'm not, I'm not like, an IT I'm not missing it. <laughs> you know. well, but see, so that's yeah. interesting, right? I mean, in, 
in, in your case, you're not missing it. I'm, I'm a decent pistol shooter. Now, if you yeah. put me in like an IPSC match or whatever, I'd, I'd, I'd get smoked. But at least in, um, it's actually accretive to my score mm -hmm. when, it, when it's mixed in with a rifle match. Not because that for I'm, the average rifle shooter, you're probably better than the average. Well, well exactly. Yeah. It's, not, it's yeah. not that I'm so good. It's just that, you know, for, for most folks, that, that, that's not what they, what they practice. Um, so for me, you know, I kind of wish there was more of it, mm -hmm. and, you know, you not so much, but I, I still think, you know what, it, it, what, we might see some more of it because people might be saying, well, why aren't we seeing pistol? And I could see some match directors <laughs> saying, yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. You know, let's, <laughs> let, let, let's have like a, a pistol stage. So of course that's going to be in another video. We've, we found mm -hmm. uh, a very interesting little, uh, widget that, that you can yeah. purchase and use with your iPhone <laughs> that, that can in, improve your pistol marksmanship. That'll, that'll be another Yeah, and we'll video. continue to cover the, the gear uh, related stuff. We know um, you guys enjoy gear as much as we do, at least kind of checking out kind of new, new interesting stuff. So we'll continue to try and cover that as well. Well, folks, uh, we, we hope you enjoyed that. Again, um, you know, this being the, the 2017 recap, we, we really appreciate our audience. And it's yeah, thank growing. you so much. I mean, this is why we do it is your feedback, uh, your encouragement. Uh, so continue to provide your feedback. Tell us what you like. Let us know your questions. Um, and thanks, thanks for watching. Yeah, thank you. And I mean, we're, 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 we're truly humbled that, you know, a couple of uh, guys who are, uh, you know, paper pushing day jobs <laughs> can actually explore this topic in a way that, you know, it's, it's, it's just really surprising yeah. uh, some of the folks in our audience that, that really uh, benefit. So again, just a very heartfelt uh, thank you uh, to the audience. We're looking forward to 2018. Absolutely. Well, folks, remember, life's an adventure. Stay on target.